Well, for more, uh, we turn now uh, to Kate Moody. We heard uh, just live moments ago uh, the list of sanctions that are in the works. We know that all sides are are mobilizing. We also saw uh, a little earlier in the day the price of oil get perilously close to that $100 a barrel mark. Pretty close for the first time in 20, since 2014, Francois. Again, this is because of Russia's strategic importance as a major provider of both crude oil and natural gas, especially for Europe, where it was the top external provider of those two uh, last year. Now, the international benchmark Brent crude did trade as high as $99.50 earlier today, uh, now trading about $96.87 per barrel there. Uh, USWTI at a high of $96 a barrel earlier now back just under 93. The major European indices were still volatile today, but we did see a fairly flat close to the trading day. Uh, the FTSE 100 in London closing just slightly above the flat line. The CAC 40 and DAX slightly below. We should have those closing figures from the European indices there showing that mixed and very, very muted close. Uh, despite this ongoing volatility. Wall Street is in the red as U.S. stocks jump back into trade after a three-day weekend. The ruble-dominated index in Moscow did plunge a further 6% earlier after Monday's 10% drop, uh, but it's clawed back some of those earlier losses to close up about 1.6%. Well, for more, let's cross over and speak to Victoria Scholar from Interactive Investor. Uh, Victoria, thanks for being with us on France 24. We have seen weeks of volatility in the markets as these tensions over Russia and Ukraine rose. Uh, now that Putin has escalated the crisis, why are markets relatively calm today? Hey there. Yeah, well, we did see sharp selling at the European Open this morning, and uh, the Nasdaq is down by 1%, and the Dow has shed more than 350 points. But uh, we did see the markets pair some of those losses, at least in Europe, with the FTSE in London actually closing in the green. I think that there was some very direct and aggressive rhetoric from President Putin last night. But the fact that it hasn't been labelled an all-out invasion as of yet... And on top of that, we've had a very swift response from the West in terms of the imposition of sanctions. That's helped to alleviate a little bit of market nervousness. But Putin very laser focused on trying to get Ukraine to renounce that ambition of NATO membership. And by no means has he ruled out the use of force uh, in Donbass. So although we are seeing a little bit of a pullback off the session lows, we are still seeing a lot of nervousness in the markets. Oil prices, meanwhile, have risen sharply. Uh, how high do you expect that to go in the short term? Well, it's been interesting to see Brent crude come within a whisper of a way of that psychological round number $100 mark, hitting eight-year highs today. And it looks as though that geopolitical risk premium could spur further gains for WTI and Brent crude in the sessions ahead, particularly if those tensions continue to escalate. Now, remember, we're operating on a backdrop of already very tight conditions in the energy markets. We're seeing supercharged demand after COVID, coupled by limited supply on the back of OPEC Plus, which has been drip feeding the market with extra supply. So the fundamentals support an uptrend with or without the geopolitical tensions. Add in the situation with Russia and Ukraine, we're looking at a move way past 100, possibly towards 110 or even $120 a barrel. Now, during these sorts of geopolitical crises, we often see investors flocking uh, to those so-called safe haven investments. Where do we stand there? Well, it's been interesting to see that gold has really been catching a bit as well as silver. So it's the precious metals that have really been benefiting along with the Japanese yen. We've seen investors looking for ways to protect their wealth uh, amidst that volatility that we've seen in equities and the volatility in oil as well. So it looks as though those precious metals are likely to stay in favor among investors. We've seen gold push above $1,900 potentially heading up towards 2000s in the week ahead if we continue to see this uncertainty and this real nervous mood in the markets. Remember, in January and before the tensions between Russia and Ukraine, there was already a lot of nervousness about the prospect of inflation, the prospect of tightening monetary policy and higher interest rates. Now we're adding these geopolitical tensions to add to the cocktail of pressures in the markets. 
Uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline has been a real bargaining chip throughout this crisis. Earlier today, we saw Russia halt, uh, Germany rather halting that certification process. Uh, how important is that project for Europe's energy supplies, and what will that move mean now? Well, clearly Nord Stream 2 is very important both for Russia and Germany. It's a huge project worth $11 billion and it's been facing delays since its completion back in September. And it comes amid rising oil and gas prices, which have been contributing to this so-called cost of living crisis amid this backdrop of inflation. So the fact that the project has now been frozen means that those upward pressures show no signs of abating in the short term. And oil and gas accounts for around half of Russia's exports and about 25% of Germany's energy supplies from gas, half of which is from Russia. So really long term, this creates questions for Europe about its energy mix, where it's getting its energy from, its energy partners and sources. And it's also about this shift towards renewables and the renewable energy transition that should help to reduce Europe's dependence on Russian oil. But there are questions about bridging fuels and making sure that energy is adequately supplied during this transition phase. All right, Victoria Scholar, that's all we have time for this evening. Thanks for that insight uh, on the situation on the markets this evening. And Francois, I'll be back later on in the evening, keeping a very close eye, as we said, on those oil prices and the closing bell on Wall Street. Did she say $120 a barrel was a possibility? Possibility. Anything's oh. possible these days. Okay, though. Kate Moody, many thanks.